the biggest uh, um, test for me right now. I think the whole world, have, a lot of people have heard about it, is the death of my son and my brother. And uh, this has done something to me that I've never felt in my life. Never, ever been through this challenge. And what I mean by challenge, the feelings and the thought process and the amount of uh, reflection on life like now. Um, it really, really makes you understand the word inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Suddenly, nothing around you is uh, worth um, stressing too much about or uh, you know, spending too much time about it. Everything around you now, you look at a way of how to turn it into something beneficial for, your, for others, for yourself and for the hereafter. And the money didn't mean much after that. My brother, he had a business growing for him and I think he was going to become a millionaire in a couple of years. So successful and only, only because of his character, people loved him. He was a very honest person. And my son, you know, he, so he died in front of me, my son, while I was giving him CPR. And he was very peaceful. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This word thanks has more of a meaning right now. Thank you, O oh Allah, for the past that you gave me. Thank you, O oh Allah, for the past that you prevented from me, the bad things. Thank you, Allah, for giving my son and my brother, and teaching me love, and now connecting me to something else. Thank you, Allah, for the future that you will give me and the things that you are going to keep, you are going to keep away from me in the future because I know that you know that will harm me. Thank you, Allah. You've take, given me my son and taken him for a reason, a purpose that you only know within your wisdom, and I rely on you. It has increased my iman, of course, and people around us. Two moments in my life, I think, uh, I dream about them all the time now, and I don't think there's anything that's more important than them. The moment my son's soul escaped, and my brother's, and the moment I buried them. It's like death had no respect for me. Who cares if you're his father, who are you? This is not your business. This is not your business, how I felt. It's like, don't you see I'm here? I'm his dad. You know, he doesn't belong to you, Bilal. He belongs to Allah. And if you do trust in Allah, now it's the time for you to prove it to yourself. What are you going to think about Allah right now? Allah is Arham ar Rahim. Maybe, maybe this was the best time for them to leave. Maybe I stayed for a reason, Allah Alam. And the moment that they were buried, I was in the grave and I felt like bashing my head on the walls. I wanted to die with them. I looked at my son, I said, my hands, how can you put your son in the ground? How dare you? You're the father, you're supposed to be protecting him. You're supposed to, you know, you promised him things. I promised my son, dad, and I'm not always going to be there for you, so I'm going to teach you to stand on your own two feet. But then I remembered Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as he was sitting, standing in the grave with his son, and I said the dua, and عَيْنُ تَدْمَعَ You know, the eyes tear. وَالْقَلْبُ يَحْزَنْ نَحَا إِسْعَرٍ عَلَى فِرَاقِكَ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمٍ So you're departing, O Ibrahim. وَلَا نَقُولُ إِلَّا مَا يُرْضِ رَبَّنَا Let me say what pleases our Lord. You know what's funny, what's ironic is that I said the exact words of the Prophet Wasallam, even the name. His son's name was Ibrahim. I could imagine Rasulullah feeling what I'm feeling right now, crying the way I'm crying. And I got stronger a little bit then. I said, Ya Allah, unite us again with Rasulullah. And I had to walk away, Abu Hamza. You have to walk away. 
there. My brother and son sat there. They just lied there. They didn't know they were going to die. But before we left here, I just want to finish it with this, something really good. And that is that uh, before we left, we went fi sabilillah. We went to, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what, what did we want to please Him with? We had our parents. We wanted to um, make them happy. My mother was missing us in Lebanon, my dad. And my brother and I, we talked to them for the last time before we left, and he got teary. My brother was very, very emotional. He had this softness about him. I looked at my brother and son, I said, sure, you want to go in this ugly time? Because there's civil unrest there. My son had a big smile on his face. He said, for Jadon Tate, I'd do anything, Bobo. Can't wait to see them, make them happy. I, we shook hands and we said, okay, let's make our intention right now. We're going to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we die there, inshallah, we die shuhada. Inshallah, ya Rabbi. We die on the path of Allah. And if we return, we return inshallah, ya Rabbi, with a huge amount of mountains of rewards. I thought we were going to die in the civil war, you know, in civil unrest there. SubhanAllah, my son and I, we went to UK. That was my last lecture tour overseas with my son. And ironically, the UK people knew my son and my brother. They didn't know anyone else in my family. Why? Because a year before it, they paid for my brother to go with me, Muhammad. And he went with me on that tour. Mufti Menka called me up that time. I said, I want to take my brother with me. They said, all right. And then my son, they knew him when he was a child and when he grew up. And they, all, they had a love for them. All of this, Allah is setting up things. And when we got there, subhanAllah, they died in a place that I never, ever thought. We were just up there on some snowmobile. Just when I had fun, I said, my son wants to see Lebanon, he wants to see the snow. <laughs> he gets up on this thing, it's meant to be safe, I don't know. He goes around once and he's all right. I come walking towards them, I was somewhere else. And our cousin said to him, no. He goes, you can't go on again by yourself, you have to take your father or your brother, or your uncle. Because my brother, he had experience on it. <laughs> Knowing my brother Muhammad, subhanAllah, he, he'd jump and do anything, subhanAllah, for people. And I said, and then they said, either your brother or your, your uncle or your father. Who does he choose? He chose his uncle. I, if, he, if he told me, they would have told me, go on with him, I would have gone on with him to keep him safe. And my brother, he said, I'll go on with him. And, you know, they loved each other a lot. يُبْعَثُ الْمَرْءُ مَعْمَنْ أَحَبْ person is gathered with those whom they love. They took a turn, and that's when I saw them now. They're taking off. My father was there, I was there. Our cousins were there, two of them. We just saw it go off very nicely. And I had a feeling. Wallahi, a voice in my head told me, they're going to smash into the wall and die. And then that voice went. I could see it, yani, hell, and then it went, and I forgot about it. I'm happy, and my son's having fun, okay, Allah khalas, but I want him to get off, you know, I'm not happy about it. My heart's not, not happy. Very uncomfortable, very, very uncomfortable. Like that voice, and it went, and I see them, it's like as if, yani, the angel of death was waiting there. It's like he had a rope and just pulled him in. It wouldn't stop. Petrol throttle got stuck. Out of all people, they just smashed into the wall at a high speed. They couldn't. Get, I could see them trying to maneuver. They couldn't get off. Very hard for me to talk about it. But my son passed away at the scene. I, I ran to him and trying to died within four minutes, maybe. And my brother, he survived a little bit, about an hour. He went into the ambulance with my son. And my brother's telling him, I'm following you, Ammo, I'm following you five minutes. 
in the hospital and he died. They both got buried. I hugged my brother and son. I said, don't worry, it's just temporary. When the angels come to you, say this. I don't know why I was saying that, Abu Hamza. I was just saying a lot of things. First thing I said is, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi. I said it quickly, because I knew I wasn't going to hold myself. I was all in. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja. I looked up in the sky. I said, where are you? The angel of the... Just give me, give me a minute. I just want to say goodbye to my son. You know? <laughs> Allah and I think well of him subhanahu inshallah this is not the last time I hope inshallah my brothers and sisters around the world can make dua for them it, he, he went to Umrah this year as well before a tragedy happens when we think about it it's, it's actually harder thinking about it when it happens, it's very hard. But I swear by Allah, something something comes down. It's called the ma'iyya of Allah. Allah gives you support. Like it doesn't happen before. It happens when it when it happens. You fall into that deep pain, and then and then Allah gives you help. Something picks you up. A sakina, you know, comes and picks you up. And you're about to fall, and then something picks you up. And Allah shows you things. Doesn't let you go. Gives you beautiful dreams. I've seen three dreams. I believe they're righteous. I've seen a lot of takhbis and all that. Takhbis means like different dreams. I know they're from my subconscious, but three of them, they were clear, they were short. I can remember every. Allah was the first one I saw. Is a week later. I wasn't eating for a week, and then I wasn't eating. I was losing weight. I, I, I didn't shower for a week, I didn't, I just, I couldn't sleep, nothing, I just, Salat, Munajat, Munajat, calling out to Allah to save me. I was, if I didn't have faith in Iman, I think you wouldn't see me here. Really. And uh, something called Khalwa, isolation with Allah. That's all I did in Lebanon. I didn't want to see anyone, but Allah kept bringing to me. Allah brought the whole family to support. Mashayikh, people. And the love was amazing. I can't believe the whole world was talking about it and making dua for them, praying for them. My son used to say, Baba, when I die, I want a lot of people to pray on me and I want my grave flat. Because his grandfather, his mother's father, Allah Rahman, may Allah assist his mother and his, his and, and their family as well, obviously. They're going through a lot of pain. Not just me, but he, his, when his grandfather died, he said, Baba, I want my grave flat and a lot of people to pray on me. And he said to his cousin, imagine we got buried we died and got buried up in Bet Ayyub. That's exactly where we got buried. But these Allah brings you these things. Like I found these out. I remembered them. His cousin would tell me something. These dreams would come in. One week later, I saw a dream. I used to say, oh Allah, just please show me a sign. Just, Ya Rabb, like, just give me some comfort. Ya Rabb, com- comfort, yani. Be kind and compassionate to me, Ya Allah. And to my parents, I can't do this. I wasn't coming back, Khalas. Ya Rab, show me, show me something. And I see in my dream that, that time. So I saw my son. Uh, pe- beautiful people come to me and say, you have to eat in the dream. And they said, look, we've got this food. They brought me to this nice restaurant and there was food in front of me. And they're all, they all said, stand aside, just don't give him some comfort to me. And there was a big chair next to me, beautiful chair in the dream. And I see my brother, my son walking in. Same clothes he died in, same everything. He walked to me, he had a partial smile and he hugged me and I hugged him. I could feel his, I could feel his bones, I could feel his skin, I could feel his clothes. I can hear everything, I can smell him. Like now I didn't, I knew I was, um, that he was dead, but I didn't know I was dreaming. Everything was real. And then I, I grabbed him and I said, Boba, where are you? He said, I'm there. I'm there, Boba. You know I'm there. And I said, oh, yeah, it's like, it doesn't want to upset me, but he knows he's gone. And I said, how are they treating you? I want to know, if he, did he go here or there? I want to know, am I going to see him in Jannah or not? Am I going to go to Jannah? Is he going to be my chef here? Or am I going to, what, what's going to happen to us? He said, oh, they're okay, Boba. They're okay. They're nice people. 
And I turned to the people and I said, don't think I'm crazy in the dream. They smiled and said, Brother Bilal, no, no one here thinks you're crazy. I said, Hamoud, is he good, my brother? He's good. And he sat down on that chair next to me. And I woke up. These things Allah brings them to you. You pray to Allah at night, I've been, night prayers have been the most sweetest thing. You know, before this night prayers, I'd, sometimes I, but this time, Allah, they're sweet. Khalwa with Allah is sweet. We talk about it, but you don't know until you do it. I can't tell you. You have to do it. You have to want to do it. First part of the night, last part of the night. This khalwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared Rasulullah for his mission after what? After a khalwa. He had to go to the cave of Hira. You have to know yourself. Yani. This khalwa is so beautiful. It's the most sincere. Just you and Allah. And honestly, I didn't think about anybody. I don't. I talk. They take it, they don't take it. I don't, I, I'm not worried about anyone. Just mess. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm pleasing Him. You sit in the middle of the night and Allah, me and Allah. It's the most beautiful thing. And this is what, this is why I'm here now talking. Allah assists you, He helps you, He doesn't leave you alone. <laughs>